Hannah dropped off, got to go get some breakfast tacos, because obviously. Hit the grocery store, got to run to the doctor, get some lab work done, and then it is probably time to throw hammers. Uh, the heavy hammer, too. Yeah, I might just invent some work to do instead of doing that. All right, little pokey poke, got the blow work done. Doc's going to see if I'm healthy-ish. Usually my blood work is pretty good. I haven't had any cholesterol issues, anything like that, but... Hey, keep checking. Why not? Time to head to the grocery store. Um, I messed up last time I went to the grocery store. I was kind of in a hurry. Forgot a few really important items. Oh, I don't know, like milk. So when you got a house full of three kids, you're going to drink uh, gallons and gallons of milk. And when we have a meathead like me, you're going to drink gallons and gallons of milk. So I just didn't stock us up correctly. Sue me. Okay, if you're not a Round Rock resident, this next part will be not very, in very interesting, so you can just skip ahead. But I'm taking the new Creek Bin uh, pass-through. They just opened this up a couple months ago. This makes it easier to get around this side of Round Rock. I'm gonna try it out. See how it feels. I did it. It was everything I had dreamed and more. I can't remember if I've talked about this before, but H-E-B has kind of put their, or they're testing the waters of meal prep, so they put these uh, meals together. <laughs> okay, you're talking to me. No, I'm talking to the camera, but oh. I mean, we, we could talk if you want. It's great. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, they're testing the waters of meal prep, and it's, they've been really good. They're fairly expensive, anywhere between five and ten dollars, and they're like five to six hundred calorie meals, all done, ready to microwave. So I've been trying them out. I like them. It's pretty good. It's a good way to, I a lot of times despise lunch because with my schedule and working from home for the most part, lunch is something I can easily skip over and the time that it takes to actually prepare a lunch if I have it meal prepped is just, it makes me, it makes me irrationally angry having to make lunch. So having that like ready and relatively cheap, I think that's going to be a game changer. Game changer in that it'll keep me from starving to death. Groceries put away. Domestic housewife style work is done for now. Uh, I'm gonna throw some heavy hammer. I have a long standing contentious relationship with the heavy hammer. I've always been a lighter thrower, uh, especially at lightweight, the 22 pound hammer. You know, you're talking about more than 10% of your body weight there. So it's gonna pull you around if you're not smart about it. Me being able to get long, being able to get extended, be able to lay back, push the knees forward is always problematic for me. It just doesn't feel natural. Um, so more reps. Hey, big surprise, that's what's gonna help. So while we're in this mode, let's chat about a couple of popular hammer topics, things that come up a lot. Uh, first is tacky. Um, a lot of people have different opinions about what they want to use. A lot of people use the 3M Super 77 spray adhesive. It's used for flooring, carpet, stuff like that. I've used it for a long time. 
Um, it, it went okay. I've never been a great hammer thrower to begin with, so I think blaming it on tacky would be the last thing that I should do. However, I kind of did this because a lot of the guys that I threw with, a lot of the guys that I kind of um, looked up to um, when I was throwing early on, they were using that. It was more of a trend with guys that had that those thousands of hours of track and field experience and really had no problem with loose long arms and getting themselves in good position, staying loose. I've always had a problem with that and I feel like while this is a good adhesive, it's convenient, you can spray it right on, like it sets really quickly, you can wash it off fairly easily, it's just, it's not enough for somebody with my lack of skill in staying loose and long and dealing with the grip of the hammer. So I did make the transition last season to using Strongman Tack. Obviously you're gonna get a big, bigger mess out of it, it's a lot more stick to it, so there's gotta be a little bit more purposeful release, but if you're moving at speed, that doesn't really come up. And you don't obviously don't overdo it, it takes not very much of this stuff to get a good grip. But I found that it helped me to relax my hands a little bit, which in turn relaxes my arms and lets me stay a little bit longer throughout the throw. So for those of you that really have a problem staying long, I would recommend going to this. Now, that's not gonna be the, the fix-all. That's not gonna be the panacea. It's gotta be worth a couple of points. For your, for your long arm problems, you still have to actively work on that, but it's just one less thing that you have to worry about. Boot blades. Another question I get very commonly is, when do I start adding in blades when I'm throwing hammers? What's the right time to start using blades? The answer, always and forever, will be as soon as possible. Right now is the time. If you're committed to this sport, if this sport is gonna be a part of your life, it's gonna be your hobby, it's gonna be something you chase and try to compete in, you are going to be throwing hammer, you're gonna be throwing hammer in blades eventually. So start now practicing to throw. Throwing without blades and throwing with blades are two entirely different throws. They have, they sort of look similar, but when you're feeling them and doing them, they're two totally different things. I've had to do both in competition. The numbers are vastly different. The deliveries are vastly different. You're not going to gain anything extra by continuing to throw in um, regular shoes instead of blades. I thought that was the case. I thought maybe I should get really good at throwing without them before I throw with them. It's just not the case. It's too different. So start training with them now because at the highest level, there's nobody throwing without blades. I mean, I'm sure I'll be proven wrong, maybe there's one exception, but for the overwhelming majority of top throwers, nobody's throwing without blades because of the incredible advantage that it gives you in staying anchored to the ground and the ability to stay long. So do what the best people in the world are doing. Don't hesitate, get the blades if you're committed to the sport. Get after it, start training. I got my boot blades, I got tacky. Got the world's babiest man bun here. Let's get after it. Something about whiskey. Not unhappy with that practice. So I guess you could say that I'm happy with it. Very tempted to pull the tape. I'm not saying that I'm not going to, but I don't know. Even if I do, I'm not gonna share with you guys. Unless it's really good, and then I'll share it. I think I just spit all over the camera. You're welcome. Good, Hannah. I think you made a perfect s'more. That was pretty good. 